Assalamualaikum and very good afternoon to everyone. Today we are in uh, the first Future Thinking webinar series uh, organized uh, by the CSR cluster at Graduate School of Business University Science Malaysia. We are today for the first time under the Future Thinking webinar series, we'll be talking about conversations on phenomenology, episteme and research landscape. And it is uh, a very, uh, very important session for for this time of the year because we're facing a, a most important situation in the world today with pandemic uh, because of the COVID-19 pandemic situation and we're as researchers as scholars are here to understand what our future research landscape is all about uh, on that basis and with us today we have three panelists who are who have the opportunity to understand what research is about from phenomenology of steam and it's with honor today I present with you to you three different panelists from the Graduate School of Business. And the first one is Adam Porter. He is um, a PhD scholar who has been researching on uh, the topic and uh, that is connected to um, um, uh, what is important to him. Is he's looking into uh, important aspect of. Um, of uh, expatriates and the, their experience in Malaysia in the, from an organizational perspective. We also have another um, uh, PhD scholar who is Nabil Nisar, and he has been researching about the, the university landscape, the future of sustainable university, looking at alumni engagement using the phenomenology epistem. And last but not least, we have Kathleen Ong, who has research actually about the role of women in the corporate sector, how women have been going uh, through the ladder and what experiences they had gone through. And, and she had used the phenomenology episteme to understand uh, the troubles, the challenges, and to understand what it takes to move up the corporate ladder. So we have our three panelists here today to share, uh, to tell the story through conversation approach, what they have gone through uh, using the phenomenology episteme. And, and before I start, I'd like to congratulate and uh, say thank you to all who are here today, uh, all the lecturers and all the students who are here to participate in this conversation, especially the PhD scholars, the DBA scholars here, and also other PhD students who are not from DSB who have joined us today. Thank you so much for coming in. We hope this, uh, your participation will uh, be a good sharing and a good learning process for all. And especially also, also I like to uh, say my uh, my thanks to uh, the CSR cluster, who is part and parcel of this uh, conversation. We in the CSR cluster uh, believe that all types of research must somehow connect to uh, what we call the sustainable tomorrow. So uh, the phenomenology episteme has and can play a role uh, contribute towards what it means to research about sustainable tomorrow, right? And with that, uh, I will now begin the um, conversation of phenomenal epistem and research landscape by just um, sharing with everyone the 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 framework of where we're in with regards to uh, the research landscape before we before I invite the panelists. I just want to share with you a particular slide here, and this slide is actually in reference to the context of um, the research landscape, if you will. So if you look at this uh, particular slide, right, this particular slide will showcase to you the, the context of what it means to, to do research. Today, when we do research, we're referring to none other than understanding the discovery of new knowledge. But there is a big question we should ask ourselves. Is our research inquiry limited by what we know about our past and present knowledge from the literature? Um, are we limited by what we read, but what we see, what others are talking about, what research should be like? Or do we also discover this new knowledge from our understanding of the social reality out there? So when we understand the context of what we're, we're researching, we are in in a way questioning our own mental frames of what we know about knowledge and this this is similar to understanding the the myths or the metaphors of the social reality what 
the mental frames or the mindset of the social reality out there perhaps is not the same as what we read in the literature. And there are very way, various ways to understand these mental constructs. There are different images, if you will, about what mental constructs are out there, what the social reality is about as seen from the eyes, from the lenses of the social actors itself. And because of that, I perhaps would like us to frame our, our conversation today towards understanding and explaining uh, to ourselves whether the interior forms of society uh, helps us to reframe the drivers of change in organization and society through different ways of understanding knowledge. Can it be through narratives? Can it be through individual or cultural meanings? Can, can it be through multiple accounts of social reality? Because this free framing will tell us different aspects of knowledge that we never thought out before. And uh, today, none and other, we have what we call hyperhistory. It's now part of our life because as we talk about data analytics, we are inundated with so much data in our lives. And data is a big part of what we see and do. And data shapes our thinking. And uh, in many ways, the social media plays a role in what we see and feel. And that also, that also affects the kind of knowledge we see and create and share with others through our research. So hyperhistory is part of what we call the data analytics of today, where history and, and data merge together. It's, uh, uh, it's, a, it's what we call the new age of data. And as we do this, we, have, we are going through what we call sense making. We're trying to understand what the world is about, what is the new forms of understanding about worldviews. And for those who are doing research on unemployment, perhaps service economy, innovation, the fourth industrial revolution or corporate governance, in many ways, we need to understand what are the different frameworks of thinking about the world uh, that is beyond looking at statistics, beyond looking at numbers, beyond looking at uh, the number crunching that we are used to. And last but not least, the idea of going beyond black and white, black versus white attitudes on methodology. Are you from the quantitative paradigm? Are you from the qualitative paradigm? Uh, that, that, if you will, has been the structure of how we do research. Perhaps there's more than the black versus white attitudes, that there is, a, um, there is a border around what is qualitative, there is a border around what is quantitative. Perhaps there's more than that when we talk about uh, understanding the future research landscape. So with that now, I will stop sharing and um, I would like to invite our first panelist, uh, Adam, to come forward and I will what will I do with uh, with this conversation for everyone's knowledge is I will go through two questions the first question will be the first round of conversation with both with all three panelists starting with Adam and then Nabil and then Kat and in that process I will ask a question I mean and you are free to answer and respond to the question as you please uh, within 10 minutes and we'll move on to the next panelist and so forth uh, so that will be a round one of questioning and as I do so, um, um, our participants in here, I would like to welcome you to write in the chat box any questions that you come in mind as you listen to the panelists uh, um, share their how they have used um, uh, the phenomenology episteme in their research. Right. So I will now begin the process by uh, asking a question to um, to Adam, and the question is. The first question, which also go to everyone of the panelists here, is how has phenomenology-based inquiry expanded your worldview on discovering new knowledge? The question again is how has phenomenology-based inquiry expanded your worldview on discovering new knowledge? So Adam, you're free to answer as you will through what you've gone through, the experience we have using uh, how we have applied phenomenology. Uh, it has expanded uh, your understanding of uh, the world worldview of the organization, the worldview, mental frames of organization, mental frames of uh, the humans' interaction within the context of organization. If you will. So, if you have a slide you can share, or if you want to just discuss as well, it is fine. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Prof. Alicia, and thank you to everyone who's taking the time to be here today. Uh, I trust that it'll be a, a profitable uh, time spent as we all pursue um, 
the same thing in slightly different ways as researchers. So um, I'm going to drop a simple definition of phenomenology into the chat um, for your reference while I uh, pick out one slide to, to share with you guys. So I recently um, presented a paper um, at a conference. Uh, the theme was uh, turbulent times in international business. And I, I felt like phenomenology was a perfect um, topic to present about uh, because of the reasons that uh, Prof. Alicia already referenced. Uh, we are in very, very unique uh, times and we have to make sure that our research uh, addresses the, the problems that um, the world is, is giving us as academia. Um, so when it comes to opening up new ways of looking at things, uh, phenomenology uh, is a uh, philosophical perspective on uh, reality and how to know how to know something. And so um, I want to start off by just sharing uh, for the sake of, of all of you who are not familiar with phenomenology, uh, just one note about what phenomenology is not. Um, because it can be a bit confusing if you open a research textbook, you might find a little section on phenomenology and it might not be clear that phenomenology is not a uh, set of qualitative tools um, packaged underneath a different philosophy like um, uh, that, that you might have already been familiar with in qualitative research. So phenomenology is its own philosophical perspective and that perspective drives the way you ask and answer questions about what can be known. So uh, as you see from the definition in the chat, phenomenology is a relatively new way of looking at reality, although as it has developed from Edmund Herschel and his uh, subsequent circle of followers, phenomenology has picked up a lot of old things that humanity has known for a long time and incorporated them into uh, what it means to think phenomenologically about something. So for me, the most interesting uh, and important way that phenomenology has shaped uh, my current research is by um, helping me see that there are different ways of